This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you this night as we gather to continue with our, our Lenten journey these Wednesday evenings, going through the Lenten theme, Sacred Head Now Wounded. And tonight we remember the wound of, of denial and uh, Peter's opportunity to, to stand and confess his Savior and, and uh, despite his failures, our gracious God uh, faithfully confessing before Pilate for us and for our salvation. The order of service found printed on your, your bulletins as you came in this night. And if you didn't get one and you need one, you, if you probably wave and we can run one down to you uh, to follow along. We'll begin with our opening hymn, 433. In the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. We read responsively from Psalm 147. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the humble. He casts wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds. He prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass grow on the hills. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the legs of a man, 
But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated. And we sing this night, verses 1 and 2 and 4 and 6 of hymn 450. 1, 2, 4, and 6. the length of our Passion readings, you may remain seated as we read from the 14th and 15th chapters of Mark. And they led Jesus to the high priest. 
And all the chief priests and the elders and scribes came together. And Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards and warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Yet even about this, their testimony did not agree. And the high priest stood up in their midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he remained silent and made no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garments and said, What further witnesses do we need? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face, and to strike him, saying to prophesy. And the guards received him with blows. And as Peter was warming himself in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came. And seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But Peter denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway, and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Again, he denied it. And after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council, and they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered him, You have said so. And the chief priest accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess the faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed inside the back cover of your hymnals. We rise. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Be seated as we sing hymn 435.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father. And from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and a servant came up to him and said, You also were with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you mean. So far our text. Even if I must die with you, I'll never betray you. You remember those words of Peter? That's what he said. Peter loved Jesus. It could never happen that he would fail him. He couldn't imagine any pressure that would cause him to turn his back on his beloved. But Jesus, well, the Lord knows what is in a man, in Peter and in you and me. And what's in there is a lot of, of a scaredy cat, a lot of fear, fear of death above all things. Hebrews 2 says that the fear of death is how the devil keeps us in bondage. So the Lord told Peter before it, would, it happened that it would happen. Not once, not twice, but three times he told them. And Peter got a chance to make good his own promise. He got a chance then to, to confess the Lord. Not once, not twice, but three times. And Peter denied him. Among those wounds that we reflect on in this Lenten season, those wounds of the passion of our Savior, among those that afflicted our Lord, surely denial of this beloved disciple Figures large, a grievous betrayal, but not a surprising one. Not to Jesus. And who among us has not, of course, added to those wounds? Opportunities for us, each of us, arise for us to confess Jesus at every hand. Yet, how often do we find ourselves pulling back for reasons far less significant than Peter. And our silence denies him. Isn't our fear the same? Not the fear of death so much as maybe the, the fear of the death of, of other people's respect. The fear of the death of, of their friendship. Meaning that they might say, well, I don't, don't want to really be a friend with a, some religious fanatic, so we don't want to push it too far. The fear of the, the death of our reputation, perhaps, or what others are going to say about us if, if we're known for speaking up in confession about Jesus. Fear of being seen as, as, as other, as not quite fitting in on the college campus or in the high school classroom because you don't go with kind of the new, new way of thinking about life in the world. Fear you'll be a problem person. And so the silence is, is denial, just as surely as saying, I don't know the man. But still Jesus endured his passion to be wounded for our transgressions, as Isaiah has it. Our denials of him need not result in his denial of us. For he carried those, each and every one of those, to his death. Where we denied, he made the good confession. First before the high priest, then before Pontius Pilate. Jesus never let the fear of death deter him. And we do well to ponder that. For though our Lord hates death, despises it, scorns it. He doesn't fear it. His is a, a perfect love for God the Father and, and also a perfect love for you and for me. And 1 John 1 says, perfect love drives out fear. I might not have that right. I might not First 1 John 1, but I know it's 1 John. Perfect love drives out fear. Jesus came to destroy exactly that fear. He came to let death devour him so that by falling into, into death's stinking gullet, 
the one over whom death had no claim, would destroy death forever. And so his people, you and I, would be set free forever from our slavery to fear. Standing before the high priest, Jesus knew what the night would bring. He knew that he would yield his life for you and me on the cross, a fragrant offering and sacrifice for the sins of the world. That his blood blotting out forever the guilt of our sin and the sin of the world. And Jesus also knew and, and rejoiced that his father would never abandon him to the grave. The psalmist said it in Psalm 16. He wouldn't abandon the Holy One to the grave. Jesus knew all these things. Although death took him, death's bands were burst. And he rose again. In the way several early church fathers describe it, Jesus was death's poison pill. Having swallowed him down, the utterly indigestible divine Son of God. Death having swallowed Jesus down, death began to retch and ended up vomiting all it had swallowed. Jesus didn't fear death because he's the living one. And death can't end him or anyone who's been joined to him through faith. In Revelation 1, the risen Christ addresses these words to his church. He says, do not be afraid. I am the first and I am the last. I am the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Now Peter's only heard that Jesus was going to be raised from the dead. Jesus told him it was going to happen. But before his eyes, Jesus saw his master in the hands of those men who bludgeoned him and turned him over to be executed. And Peter's heart sinks, and he he struggles and stumbles in fear. Rather than confessing his Lord, Peter, in his own fear of getting what Jesus got, denied him. And when the rooster crowed, Peter remembered that's how Jesus said it would be. And he ran out and wept bitterly. He wept bitter tears for his own fear and sin and cowardice. But he didn't spare. And here is where Peter differed from Judas. Wonder, did he recall the look in the eyes of his Savior when he said, Remember, when Jesus said, Remember, I've told you that you would deny me, and I was right, so you have. Would Peter remember that Jesus also told him that he would rise again and that he would be right about that too? Would he imagine the words of Jesus? I've told you, I prayed for you, Peter. I've prayed for you so that your faith will not fail. Now, after that night, I want you to think about the Peter that we meet on the other side of the resurrection. After Christ's victory over death in the grave, Peter, Jesus restored Peter on the shores of, of the Sea of Galilee, that great resurrection appearance over breakfast there. And then think of Peter on Pentecost, 50 days after Easter, with the flames of fire and preaching the sermon that awakened faith in the hearts of 3,000 by the Holy Spirit. The man who, who cowered before a little servant girl out in the courtyard, afraid that people are going to listen to her. After Pentecost, Jesus, Peter so boldly told the crowd, This Jesus, whom you murdered, hanging him on a tree, God is raised from the dead, and we are all his witnesses. And what what stood in between? What caused the change from the, the fearful to Peter the bold? It's the resurrection of Christ and the outpouring of, of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. And guess what? That's what can change you. That's what can change you and me too. God gave you his Holy Spirit in your baptism. 
If you are a child of God and believer, it's already because the Holy Spirit calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies whole Christian church on earth. In the water, you were placed into the tomb with Christ and raised with him, with God's guarantee of life, a life that will never end. In those waters, you were covered in his name, the God of heaven, filled that water with his grace. Titus 3 says, He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior. So the Holy Spirit descended on Peter, on Pentecost, and the other disciples, transforming them from the quivering cowards to fearless confessors. What changed was the conviction of faith that Jesus truly destroyed death's power because he endured it and suffered it, and he atoned for all of our denials. Jesus atoned for each and every one by his confession and suffering for us. And you know what? Many years later, Peter got another chance to confess Christ, not just through the the remainder of his apostolic ministry, which of course he did, Through years and and struggles and filled with the Holy Spirit, God had already worked a great change in Peter from the impetuous act-before-thinking version of Peter. That fear was replaced with the certainty of Jesus' vow, because I live, you will live also. Around 65 AD in the city of Rome, Peter was told that he had to sacrifice to the emperor, Nero, and deny Jesus or die. By the grace of Almighty God, Peter refused. He refused. He made that good confession. And Peter went the way of his Lord. There in Rome, Peter was crucified too. According to church tradition, Peter was crucified upside down because he didn't feel himself worthy to suffer and die the same death as his Savior. In the end, Peter looked the fear of death in the face as if to say, you cannot scare me this time. I know who lives forevermore. And I know that you have no power over him He is my Jesus. And I am in him, and his body and his blood are in me. My sins are forgiven. They've been blotted out. My life is secure. You lose death. Even as you take me, I am not afraid of you. Not anymore. Well, might Peter's prayer have been that day, the theme verse that we sing tonight. My shepherd now receive me, my guardian own me, thine. Great blessings thou didst give me, O source of gifts divine. Thy lips have often fed me with words of truth and love. Thy spirit oft hath led me to heavenly joys above. Amen. We rise. And now may the peace of God, which passes human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll continue with the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord God, in these Lenten days, we pray that you would draw us into your light, that you would expose where we, like your people of old, if thought spoken and acted against you, that in repentance we might look to your Son, and that in the midst of so many denials, we praise you that he made that faithful confession for us. Make us to be bold confessors, gracious Father, in our families, 
with our friends in our school hallways and classrooms. Make us bold in our workplaces. And Lord, we pray that you make us bold to make that great confession and never deny you, especially as we stand before you on that final day of our lives and the final day of this world. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you love the world by giving your Son that whoever believes in him should be saved. So we pray that you would bless the work of your church for all those who are called to preach your saving gospel. For Matthew, our synodical president, Mark, our district president, Bud, our circuit visitor, Stephen and Dennis, our pastor, our pastors, deacon, our Lorna, our deaconess, for Jeannie and Cassandra and our preschool helpers, that the, those who hear the word of life in this place would be awakened faith and saved. We pray that you would continue to be with our Sunday school teachers and every mom and dad in each Christian home, that our homes also be places where your word of life rings and that good and faithful confession is made. Lord, in your mercy. God of grace, we pray for those who are sick or hurting, the brothers and sisters that we commend into your care this night, or those that are known only in our hearts that we lift before your throne, that you would strengthen and preserve them, that in the face of death that you would enable them to make the good confession resting in true faith in Christ's own victory, and that you would sustain us each in the face of that day. And we thank you that for those that have gone before us, those beloved confessors who did not deny you, but have given us the example of faithfulness, and who even now you've gathered before your throne, that we be preserved in their same faith, and look forward to the day when you gather your whole church to be with you. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Father, for our nation, our president, governor, mayor, and every elected leader, for our farms and fields, for our military men and women, for our medical workers, our emergency workers, fire personnel, and police, preserve each in their appointed duties. And we pray that you would help us each to view our callings in life as those places and that you have put us to reach through children in service to your world that you would be with every husband and wife, mom and dad in every Christian home, that you would help us faithfully to carry out our callings, and that you would, uh, through those labors, cause us to bear one another's burdens until the day of Jesus' coming. All these things we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. He was despised and written by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Be seated as we close with him, 880.
just one announcement this night, and I don't like to, to do a lot of announcements on these evening services, but I would ask if you would take a moment on your way out tonight to sign in, if you will, for an Easter service. And it'll help give us an idea about our services and making sure that we're behaving ourselves there. So, and everybody that is in your family that will be a part of that, just feel free out of the paper to sign in, and that would help us a great deal. Thank you.